Well, here we are. Welcome back. It wouldn't be a quick playthrough if we didn't have a little sort of commentary and uh, thoughts and uh, opinions on what went down uh, previously and what we what we did. Oh my gosh, I just saw another bill here from freaking estate lawyers. Gotta love them. Really pisses me off. Um, right. Stalingrad Roads. You know, this, first of all, I, I'm just, I'm smitten with the uh, aggressive artwork. Uh, just powerful stuff on the, on the box. Uh, mine got a little dinged up uh, in, in the shipping, but you know, we're coming from uh, Europa, so shit happens. Anyway, uh, there were quite a few questions about the counters. I had folks commenting on the odd artwork, and I, I don't see it. I, I don't get it. I don't see what's odd about it. Uh, we've got standard infantry units with, a, you know, sort of a, a pa I would call this a pastel <laughs> uh, fell growl, right? And the reduced side is clearly reduced, right? We can see it's half. Right? Literally. So, I love that. Uh, I, I like the counters. People were bitching about the side nibs. And I think if, if you want... You know, these actually have the four side nibs. So, that's kind of lame. But, you know, you really don't notice them when they're on the map. You only notice them when I take these super close-up pictures. And you go, oh my god, there's a, there's a side nib. There's a side nib. Lighten up, Francis. So, it's all good. Uh... I like the counters. I like the thickness. I like the size. I like the fact that I got two dice that are actually representative of the uh, teams, if you want to call them that. Let's talk about map art for a sec, because uh, I, I got uh, I got comments on that. Uh, I found, generally speaking, the map to be clear, concise, informative. But yet, once again, uh, it's that European soft palette color thing that uh, Vuka Sims is known for. Nuts does it. Um, Hexasim doesn't really do it as much. But uh, I, I, I'm kind of just I'm I'm done with that. Right? Like it's like it's like uh, it's almost like the reverse of when. I think it was the early 80s when all of a sudden we, we went from two or three colors or three or four colors to whatever color you want. And we just went crazy with maps and particularly, particularly God bless them, the gamers, right? With the, the elevation colors that went from, you know, uh, white to orange to red to dark red to maroon to purple or whatever it was, right? And it was just glaringly bad. I think the Austerlitz map from the Napoleon Brigade series was one of the most garish, uncomfortable, make me want to vomit in my mouth maps I've ever seen in my life. But damn, I love that game. I played it twice. Great, great game. So this is the opposite of that. It's all, it's all soft, and I just, I, I feel like I want to hug my enemy. I, I, uh, I you know, I, it's, it's a little less war gamey and a little more. Um, a little more, a little more soft and loving. I will say that the there's already. I've only folded this map. This is the third time I fold this map. I got a hole here already, uh, and you've got line creases. The paint, the ink, it's going to come off these things pretty, pretty quickly. Uh, so I'm, I'm, I'm a little down. I would say, generally speaking, I'm down on the maps. However, all the information that you need is on the maps. There's a compass rose on it, which is nice. Uh, there's a, a little uh, game turn track and there's some other bits and pieces on the map, so I like that. Rules. Look, if you've played, and I'm sorry for the dogs eating dog food in the background here, but uh, that is what it is. The rule book, if you've used uh, or played, sorry, Liberty Roads before or any of the others, Victory Roads, etc., 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 you will know this set of rules like the back of your hand, subject to the very specific things for. How supply is handled here is a little bit different because you have Fortress Stalingrad concept and you have a little bit more detailed weather and you have a set of uh, circumstances around Stalingrad and around Operation Mars 
the kind of influence and interplay in between, let's call it, uh, in, in between the Hitler and Manstein uh, 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 chits, uh, tracks, etc., that influence the number of uh, uh, replacements and resources that you get. The combat is almost identical, I believe. There's some some things in here with regard. There's really no. There's, there are very few benefits uh, other than the German superiority whether in attack or defense, uh, which can be degraded over time. Uh, there's very few DRMs uh, or modifications that are going to impact your combat. And I kind of love that. And it's, it's the, one of those wonderful things where you look at the game, you look at this CRT, and you go, okay, well, uh, you know, uh, defender loses one, attacker loses one, that's fine. And then you realize that uh, you've really only got... Uh, you know, like a 10.62 or a 10.63 unit in that hex, and you flip that sucker and it goes down to 5.32, and all of a sudden you're thinking, whoa, this is a deadly game. This is a massively deadly, highly attritional, you can lose your ass all over the place type of game. Look all the way up in a 5 to 1. I've talked about this before. Like A1D3 right here, right? Roll an 11. A1, D3, thanks for playing. So if you're you're doing a mass attack and you get five to one odds, which you know, can happen, and, uh, and it's a bit of a telegraph, but it can happen, and then there's combat, there's tactical chits and stuff that go into this that, that will mitigate different things for folks that will help, uh, for the Soviets, will help mitigate the German superiority, and then the Germans have things around, like the Pack 88s will enforce a step, you know, extra step losses, or other chits will enforce step extra step losses on the Soviets, vice versa. All sorts of fun, nuanced stuff that we'll get to in a sec. I'll show you the charts for the for the chits in a minute. Uh, but this this CRT is so freaking deadly that you know you can see a full massive assault by the Russians just go poof (laughs) if it all goes pear shaped it's freaking awesome to see anyway uh rules so look like i said you're going to know this game uh there are there's there's these nuances around the stavaka phase the soviets losing momentum the german superiority uh markers and major successes for the soviets which is how they uh, get rid of the German superiority, then you get your your standard Führer ap- approval. Hang on a second. Hey, hey, knock it off. Sit, sit. Blue. Sorry, gang. All right, got taken out of the moment there. Everything else pretty stock standard. A couple of scenarios. Two, I think there's three, maybe two, two or three. Don't know. Looks like there's four. How about that? Looks like there's five. What do you know? All right, five scenarios. So, look, uh, like I said, there's a lot going on here. And I'll, if, you, if you're if you done with this at eight minutes, I probably should have said up front, you know, if you're, if you're curious about this this uh, this event and you've played Stalingrad 42 from GMT games, you, you want to do yourself a favor and get this. One thing that, you know, look, this. There are a lot of these uh, tables and charts which blow it up from a one mapper to almost a two mapper by the time you lay all this stuff out. You know, so we've got... And uh, and all, they're conveniently double-backed, right? So we've got scenario on the back of there. I don't mind that. Uh, Soviet player aid, which has their... You know, the... the, the means for leaving the Stavaka box and entering the reserve box and moving stuff around, whether it's a major or minor offensive, how you accumulate support chits for the Soviets. You've got a player aid for Operation Mars, which tells you what happens based on die roll every turn. Another, uh, another reinforcement chart there for that. Access player aid. It's got, uh, oh, it's double-sided bad boy, right? So this has got the Fuhrer approval process. This uh, particular crisis at the OKH uh, chit or event that occurs or uh, acti- something that pops up in the game because of things that happen. And then once you get to Fortress Stalingrad, you've got these supply levels that you need to manage. You've got to manage the air bridge. I didn't get to experience any of that because uh, I lost 
the airfields early. And then uh, all the events that are associated with all the J-52 units, and that's a whole another little subsection of rules that are not, not complicated. Uh, here, are the, here are the tactical chits and support. I call them tactical chits. They're support markers, I guess, since it says that right there. Uh, the KDs and uh, Novikov and surprise attacks and all the rest of it, all of these things can give you uh, some benefit at a cost, generally speaking. And I think this adds a lot of flavor to the game without adding a lot of rules overhead. And I like the way that that has been handled in all the modules. I, I love it. And here's the support markers for the access teams. And then some nice uh, setup charts. Oh, look, we got a guy. All right, we got to put him in a baggie. Uh, I was just using this as a rather than using yet another chart, I, uh, I just put that on the map. All right, campaign game set up, all nicely organized here. I, I'm not the guy that's gonna put them on here and then, and then on the map, but yeah, you can do that if you want. Or you can set it all out too if you want. So look, I, I was, generally speaking, the gameplay, the gameplay was tense and fun and fast. It Things moved quickly. Once I built myself a little uh, play uh, turn, uh, what do you call it? Turn sequence, sequence of play. Things moved along uh, a lot faster. I was not flipping through the rule book looking at the sequence of play. Uh, there's also a terrain chart on the back of the CRT, which is has pretty much everything you need to know. Uh, and uh, I I found you know unfortunately for me uh, the access there must be a baggy open. Somewhere. The Axis made uh, some bad or poor choices. Yeah, here it is here. Made some poor choices in regards to the when to declare the fortress. I think I was chatting with uh, one of the chaps in the Eastern, East Front Facebook, East Front War Games Facebook uh, page that, you know, you want to go ugly early on the Fortress Stalingrad. And I was thinking that, you know, holding out longer was a good thing because we were bleeding <laughs> a lot of Soviet units it wasn't making a whole big big difference though uh, because they, they had so many and now I need a baggie for this so bear with me I might just because this is going to go away until I move into the house <laughs> if we ever move into the house come on all right and so so uh, I, I there were some aspects of the game Basically, is what I'm trying to say here is that I did not get to have a chance to experience, and we will uh, we will do that in we will do that in the the spring, I guess, when uh, when we have an opportunity to uh, lay things out and take our time and set multiple games up at a time. All right, so look, uh, uh, how I, I'm trying to you know from a, a command and control perspective, there's there's just enough chaos going on that you you don't have 100% clarity into every turn because you're, you're pulling tack chits uh, or support markers and stuff. Uh, you don't have 100% clarity because you don't know what the enemy's going to do. Uh, you don't have visibility into uh, you know the impact of the Hitler marker and stuff like that, the track there. So there's a lot going on with the game, It's but it is fast to play. If you want a crunchy, detailed simulation, you know, Stalingrad 42 is not your game, and this is not your game. But if you want to get a thematic exposure to the Stalingrad campaign at the point where the Soviets are about to get the, the, the Soviets are about to kick some serious Axis backside, this is your Huckleberry, and it, it begins at that point, literally with a massive assault. And it's the... Uh, it's the second East Front game that starts off with a bang like that. They have not covered any early war games that I recall using this system. Uh, so anyway, good stuff. I, I, I recommend it and I think it has lots of value. I think it's got some replay value in it. I didn't find a lot of replay value in one of the other titles and I forget which one it was. Uh, 
but uh, my favorite of all of all these uh, Rhodes series games is by Nicola, uh, Nicholas uh, Rident or Rident or whatever you want to, uh, how you, however you want to pronounce that, um, is Liberty Rhodes, and I, I found uh, I found Liberty Rhodes just to be so compelling, particularly with the Round Hammer expansion and, and looking at the nineteen forty three invasion options. So look, yeah, it, it's a great little system. Enjoy it or not, buy it or not, no skin off my nose. I obviously uh, paid for this one myself. Had it on pre-order actually, and they my credit card had been changed because we got hacked and they just canceled my order and didn't let me know. So I had to pay retail, full retail, didn't even get the pre-order price. But I liked it. I liked the system enough to buy the bullet and buy it. So if that says anything, you know, of course, as always, your mileage may vary. Adios muchachos. Go roll some dice. Ciao.